Hello, welcome everyone to another SESTEC webinar. Thank you for joining us. So uh, today's topic is going to be the conversational analytics and I'm going to be your host and Ahmed is going to be joining me soon. So uh, without further ado, let me actually start sharing my screen. Okay. Okay, so in essence, let me talk about the speech analytics for a moment. The speech analytics system is uh, actually, we see an, every interaction in a contact center as an opportunity to engage and to evaluate how well we are doing. As you probably remember from our previous webinars, uh, we have welcome and serve stage, which was the chat bots, the conversational AI, IVR bots, and then we did the authentication piece uh, using voice biometrics. And then uh, the final piece on that, and let me very quickly move on to that slide, is uh, actually it's the evaluation stage, okay? How can we evaluate and also improve our contact center, our own agents, and increase the customer experience all the while not increasing the cost of running a contact center. So this evaluation stage is uh, where we are going to be talking about today. Okay. So as I mentioned in the beginning, every interaction is an opportunity. So what is that interaction? Now, the uh, customers can be contacting with your contact center. So with your customer's contact center, actually, via different ways. So on the left-hand side, you can see the channels. And then uh, the conversational analytics takes those interactions, whether they're coming from a voice channel or they're coming from a text-based channel. So uh, we are using three types of information. The first is conversational data, okay? How and what the customers are saying, as well as what the agents are responding. So that is the conversational data. Are they actually interrupting each other? Are they talking over? Uh, are they getting angry? So there is the emotional feature in that as well. So that, that's the first part, the conversation data itself. The second one is the metadata, which is when did the call happen? What was the direction of the call? Which skill group or agent group Q uh, actually got the call? So all of this metadata can give us very uh, deep insight because you will understand that each contact center can have trends and those trends can be daily, weekly, monthly. And I'll give you one example. Maybe a contact center belonging to a financial institution like a bank, you know, can have uh, the first Monday of every month, you know, as busy as a telecom. OK, and people might be calling in to ask about their, you know, salaries, their, their you know, payments, their credit lines, everything. So the metadata when you combine it with the conversation data can give you more insights. And then the final piece is the audio data. Now, uh, for any text-based interaction like chats or emails, there is no audio data. But when you think about in a traditional way, which is you know customers speaking with an agent over the phone, in that sense, we can uh, understand and evaluate the tempo, the uh, way that the customers are speaking or the agents are responding to them. And again, there is this uh, silence duration, which can drive the efficiency of a contact center either uh, in a bad or in a good way. Now, using the uh, three types of data, we can kind of produce uh, and use three products within a certain you know, uh, platform. The first one is speech and text analytics. Now we analyze every interaction and provide insights Okay, the second one is agent performance analytics, and you can think of it in two ways in between itself. So manual evaluations and also the automated evaluations. Now in a contact center, uh, what I have been seeing in my experience is that probably up to two or 3% of the entire call population is being, uh, is being evaluated. So uh, by using an automated quality uh, measure, you are actually considering the full 100% of the call volume, so which is extremely important to see. And then the final piece is call recording. Now, SESTEC is agnostic, meaning that it can install and deploy its own call recording solution, as well as it could integrate with the third-party recording solutions. Now, we have partners in the, you know, in different regions in, uh, globally. So uh, we have many different uh, ways of integrating with their core recording platforms. 
So that is why uh, I say it's agnostic. And our own core recorder can be deployed on a, you know, in a hosted environment or it could be on-prem and integrate with the largest contact center operators like Cisco Genesis and Avaya, okay? So any person who uses speech analytics or even heard of it probably is going to understand that the speech analytics data provides insights and that insight could be in different ways. So you can take a look at the trends of customers Okay, how about right now? Can you guys hear me? I dropped off the stage, so now I'm back. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you, Alexi, for, for alerting us. So I don't know what happened. I don't know where you actually uh, lost me because I've been talking about the features like trend analysis, root cause analysis. Okay, a minute ago, okay. The last piece I was saying is the real-time analytics. And after that, I mentioned the AI models like uh, gender and age detection within speech analytics, okay? So, uh, so these are the features of, of speech analytics. The real-time analytics is there. So your customers might be asking you, can you do this transcription in real-time and alert the uh, supervisors or the managers in the contact center? The answer is yes, but usually, the real-time analytics are using much more resources than the offline. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you the resources that we require to run speech analytics. And the real-time just consumes four times as many servers, analysis servers, as the historical one. So it's doable, but uh, there, there is a cost uh, doing that kind of uh, transcription, real-time transcription, okay? So 
let's move on to the next one. Agent performance analytics. I think I mentioned the manual evaluation as well as the automated evaluation. Now, one thing that we uh, can, you know, advocate as the uh, automated quality, and you can also tell the same to your customers is, you know, before even running the automated quality forms and, uh, and the evaluations on the platform, even telling the agents that 100% of their calls will be evaluated automatically, we have seen improvements in agent performance just by telling this. The reason being that now they think it's not only the 2% or 3% of their calls randomly picked and selected and evaluated, it's actually the 100% of it. So they immediately start working on their performances, okay? On the other hand, we still provide manual evaluation. Well, you might be saying manual evaluation is being provided by other vendors as well for a while. And what's the difference? What's differentiating SESTEC from the other vendors? The, re the answer is we're making manual evaluation smarter. Now, if you remember, I mentioned something, random calls. Now, in a normal sense, the manual evaluations randomly picks calls of an agent so the uh, supervisors can evaluate the calls. In our manual evaluation, you can create rules to make it even smarter. You can say one quality person should not be evaluating more than five similar calls. And what's a similar call? Similar in terms of duration, or similar in terms of category, okay? This means that they're going to be evaluating a much wi wider, you know, variance of calls rather than, you know, the system picking random calls to, to evaluate, okay? So that was the uh, differentiator. And our core recording. Now, our core recording solutions sometimes go hand by hand with the speech analytics. It can be a complementary solution. We can uh, record 100% of a contact center you know, calls and we can integrate with Avaya, Genesis, and Cisco as well as other PBXs, okay? And with core recording, there comes a screen recording. We have customers, referenceable customers that we, we are doing screen recording on. So that is you know, something that you could mention or respond to an RFP if they ever ask you about screen recording, okay? So just take a look at one of the cost saving and ROI calculators here. We have a contact center and of course they are handling, you know, thousands of calls, but you know, how do you actually uh, save money? I mean, speech analytics is there just to uh, enhance the customer experience. But on the other hand, when you're running an ROI calculator, it needs to be, you know, uh, understood that speech analytics is also a tool to decrease the cost of running a, a contact center. One example here is uh, decreasing the average handling time. How do you decrease the average handling time? Is that you can take a look at the silence durations is one way, okay? Silence durations are usually giving an indicator of the efficiency of your contact center. So if you can cut the silence uh, in every call by let's say 10% or 20%, it will automatically mean lower average handling time. And that will automatically mean savings in the contact center. There are other ways of you know, saving money using the product, and you could find these uh, calculators on our web page. Okay, so actually I see Ahmed joining me on the stage, but uh, welcome Ahmed. Hi Anil, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thanks a lot. I see that you put on your white shirt, Ahmed. Yeah, this time, yes. Perfect. Uh, is there anything you want to mention, Ahmed, before I jump into the topology, the hardware, and the brief demo? Uh, my suggestion is, Anil, after your demo, I take over and I just explain some of the key selling points <laughs> that I emphasize during my sales process. And some, some, some specific parts of the demo I highlight even on the sales level. But uh, okay. I, I, I'd rather suggest you to call, go ahead and give me just 20 minutes in the end of this webinar. That's exactly how I, uh, okay, planned. Great. Okay, perfect. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me walk you through the architecture diagram just a little bit. So if I could make this full screen, probably it's not gonna work within the browser, but okay. This is a very basic diagram. Uh, what you see here is, you know, your media gateways, the PBXs, 
actually sending the traffic of, of the contact center to a network switch. And uh, you can see within the dashed lines, the SESTEC services. What are those? The core recording server is one of them. You know, that is actually connected to a CTI server and to the network switch. The switch is responsible of sending the uh, RTP packages, which is the voice data and optionally the call events. Now, this is the traditional way of recording calls, but there's also newer methodologies like active recording, CPREC recording using session border controllers and a SESTE core recorder is capable of doing that on certain PBXs like Cisco. So we are gonna be actually you know, uh, evaluating this case by case whenever a customer reaches out to you and asks if you know, the core recorder can uh, record the platform. So please you know, consult your pre-sales team to, to uh, understand the requirements and how we can record the calls. And of course, for any analytics platform, it's important to record them in stereo and in uncom uncompressed format. So our preferred audio format is G711. So if you ever come across a customer asking about this question, I think uh, you should be aware if, I mean, you cannot probably memorize G711, the easier way is uncompressed because when you compress a call, you're losing a lot of acoustic data on the call that we are using in speech analytics. It will also affect the, the speech to text accuracy. Okay, so that is uh, extremely important. And stereo means customer and agents are recorded on separate channels because we base our analyses on, on, you know, on stereo so that each customer and agent are evaluated differently. Okay. Now, underneath the call recorder is distributing the calls so that uh, the call metadata is being written into our MS SQL database. Okay. And the analysis servers are just accessing the audio files and the metadata to analyze the calls. What is analyzing a call? It's actually transcribing the call, so producing the text output, but also categorizing the call for the topic categories. It's also you know, extracting the call events like the interruptions, talkovers, and calculating the monotonicity level or agent tempo, the speech speed. So all of that is analysis server's job. Okay, so a lot of question that we see from customers is how quickly can your engine transcribe the calls? Well, it depends on the hardware resources, right? So uh, right now, our analysis is actually completing an analysis of a call in one sixth of the actual duration. What that means is a six minute call will be transcribed in one minute. Okay, so just taking this one example, you can extrapolate how much you know uh, hours the customer is receiving and how much resources they are willing to allocate for the speech analytics, and then you can easily answer how fast or how slow you know the analysis servers will be acting. And then the last piece is the web server. The web server is you know there because the speech analytics is a web application as you can see here which i will come in a minute in the demo okay the web server is responsible of running the reports daily jobs uh, nightly jobs and then just creating that you know insightful web application for the customers to use okay so that is our topology in a very very small nutshell. Of course, when you put this in a real environment, there will be high availability kicking in. There will be maybe multiple core recorders for different regions, and each region might have its own, you know, dashed line services. So analysis servers just sitting next to the recorders, not to increase the audio bandwidth in the customer. So we could, again, evaluate it case by case uh, for each and every customer. But this is the nutshell, this is the components. Now, these components turn into the hardware specs. And for this reason, we have a tool that we are using. And also, uh, I know that I've shared this tool with some of our partners. What we do here is extremely easy. We are asking the customer how many you know, recordings they have in a day, how many seats they have, because usually, one way or another, they can answer this question easily. What they can say is, hey, we have 250 seats. I don't know how many recordings we receive. 
Well, in that case, we can do an assumption. Each seat might be producing around five hours of audio in a typical contact center. So 250 times five, you know, that is your daily uh, number of hours. Why we are converting everything into daily number of hours is again, because the analysis servers is running, I mean, uh, to convert those calls into transcriptions and they can do it within a time frame. So by taking into the total call volume in hours into consideration, then we can easily calculate how much calls, how much uh, cores of a server that we need to run the operation. So the engine size is driven by the number of hours within the contact center. Okay, so this tool is asking me max recordings per day, average talk time. So you can say the average talk time is, you know, three minutes. What is three minutes? 180 seconds. How many calls are you receiving within a day? I'm receiving 15,000 calls. Okay. The rest of the information is pretty standard, so I'm not going to go into much details. So just by uh, using the deployment input here, the speech analytics system is running, you know, just a small uh, calculation tool to understand the size of this operation. So 15,000 calls a day, and each one of them is uh, three minutes, uh, you know, on average, will make around 750 hours a day. So what is the size that we need to, you know, uh, deploy? Let me actually, you know, uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay. So as you can see, we have three components here. And additionally, there will be the core recording component. But for now, I'm omitting it because there could be an existing recorder which we will be integrating with. So for now, let's focus on the three components, the database, which is the SQL, you know, the analysis machines and the web. So for a 750 hours a day, we only need one machine for each of these components, okay? The database being eight core, analysis being the engine, it needs the most number of cores, 24 cores, and the web application with the 16 cores. Then there's the RAM and the disk spaces that are being required, okay? Now, one question that your customers may say, hey, do I need to give you a dedicated database server? The answer is no, they don't have to, okay? We could use a cluster, uh, uh, we can use a database server a from their cluster and they don't have to give us a dedicated uh, server. The second most frequently asked question is, do they have to be physical? Now, we prefer physical, especially for our engine. Why? Because we are promising a customer saying that whatever call that is being recorded today, it will be transcribed by next morning. Well, in order to keep that promise, we have to make sure that our analysis engine is not sharing its resources with other applications. So with a physical machine, we could dedicate it to our engine. Well, with a virtual, virtualized environment, we could still do some dedication on the number of cores, but uh, usually they are sharing the resources in the background. So we have to be careful and talk with the customer that this is a very resource hog, you know, uh, application, and it's gonna be using all 24 cores in almost like a, you know, nonstop manner. So it might slow down other applications that you're, you know, basically sharing your virtual, virtual environment with. So, that is why the analysis machines could be physical, but if that's not possible, we are okay going with the virtual machines, okay? So this tool is extremely easy to be used. And now going back to my demo site. So we split the webinar into two parts. So today is going to be the speech analytics part, the main features of it, and in the next one, I'm gonna be running the quality part as well as our reporting capabilities. So for now, let's focus on the speech analytics, okay? So who is gonna be using? Let's start with that, okay? So not everyone is gonna be using the speech analytics. We don't want everybody in the customer side using the speech analytics because they're not speech analytics experts, you know? Usually our customers dedicate either one or two person or maybe up to a team of people who could understand and evaluate and use the system by themselves, okay? And we go through a great kind of training process 
we tell them, okay, this is what it means. This is how you take a report. This is how we create a query. But you know, uh, at the you know end, our customers can become some experts. But if they don't want to, you can always offer them some managed services to your customers. Of course, you can say, hey, we have some consultants who can help you. We could get them from Sestech as well. So that is a joint effort. But uh, just to mention. We have very large customers or small customers who have, you know, people on board who understand this system and run it effectively without much help. Okay, so uh, so let me go into the demo very quickly. It all starts with a customized dashboard. I say customized because every single selection I make, you know, will be memorized for the next time I log in. And this is an omni-channel analytics platform. So it's not going to be only the calls, but it could be the, the IVR calls, the text chats, like the emails or the chats, you know, everything will be analyzed in one bucket. Okay. So today's topic is aviation company, and they're receiving 170,000 calls in the month of December. And the system analyzed almost, you know, 90, 95% of them, the remaining calls did not have any speech in them. So the first metric we see is the non-first call resolution calls. So which is the unresolved problems where the customers have to call repeatedly within a short time frame. Now, 3% might seem trivial, but this is what you need to remind your customers. On an average contact center, each 1% increase in the non-FCR rate roughly translates into $45,000. So if this non-FCR rate becomes 4%, for the month of January, then you can be sure that you lost some money because you handled more uh, repetitive customers. So the aim is to drive this number to as low as possible and also understand why your customers are you know, calling in multiples because they cannot resolve their problem in the first try. And then the next one, which is really important, is the speech occupancy rate. This is what an analysis engine can produce it can understand the silence durations within each call, and then it can tell you how efficient your agents are using their time on the calls. So in this environment, the speech occupancy rate is 70%. It means that in the entire call population, 70% of the time, there is someone speaking. And actually it means 30% of the time, it's silence, which is you know not a good thing because you're basically burning money so your efficiency right there is <clears throat> low and it could be improved okay so this is extremely important as i mentioned earlier in the roi calculation the uh, silence duration by itself can also you know uh, increase or decrease the cost associated with running the contact center now the rest is the metadata as i mentioned the metadata is how you know the calls are being uh, distributed, average call duration, silence durations, and hold durations. Okay. Now, the trending words and phrases is what the customers will be asking because they want to understand why the customers are calling and what is the trending topics in the contact center. One of the ways to discover it is just by looking at this you know, little graph. And between you and us, guys, you know, when you're doing a demo or we are doing a demo, this is just a good looking, you know, piece of information here. And it's, you know, doing this spin and think, uh, you know, it could spin fast or slower. So this is really engaging during a demo. But on the other hand, you could also tell that, hey, this is an aviation company. And when you see the phrase cancel ticket up here, you can also say this is not a good sign because cancel ticket is one of the top 30 phrases. That means that a lot of people are saying that they want to cancel their ticket. Now, maybe with the COVID situation, this might be relevant and the airline doesn't see anything to be alarmed. But in a normal condition, this being here uh, can be pretty alarming. So that is very relevant to real life. And on the right hand side, you see the topic distribution. This is why the customers are calling. This is exactly showing them how many customers called and for what reason. Now, airline company, 80%, 70% of the calls are for tickets. And then the, they start you know, uh, getting happy because, hey, there are a lot of people calling for tickets. Well, this is a drill down graph. They shouldn't get happy because 
When you click on it, it will show you the topics, the categories underneath the ticket. And you can see that the cancellation calls are as much as the new ticket sales calls. So a lot of people are calling to cancel their ticket, which is reaffirmed one more time. Okay, so the topic distribution is where the customers see, hey, I didn't know the customers were calling about these, these, these categories. But when you have a nice little distribution graph, then they understand the reasons why their customers are calling. Okay, so this is a great way to, to see that. Okay, the rest of the two graphs are pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Okay, so uh, one of them is the daily call counts. The other one is the call counts by groups, inbound versus outbound calls. Okay, so that was the dashboard. Now we have the search calls. Every tool has a place where you should be able to listen to the calls, see the text, you know, and, uh, you know, if it is chat, you have to see the, the, the chat, you know, session, the transcription. That is why we have the search calls. Now, to make life easier for our customers, we created these, you know, filters up top so they could search and filter by different agent groups or skill groups and particular agents, even the topics, we have a big list of search filters. Well, this is one way to filter the calls. And then the second way is using advanced, advanced search filters, which are called queries. Queries are vital for any analytics platform because you're dealing with big data. So you have to find what really matters for you. Now, one example I will show on the queries is, uh, you know, empathy without enthusiasm. How do you find calls where agents show empathy towards customers, but they are not enthusiastic. So this is a very good example of the power of the speech analytics tool, okay? So what this tells us is the agents are probably saying the right thing, but not in the right way, okay? So they're showing empathy. So think of yourself as the customer who is stuck at the airport, okay? And you're calling after four hours of waiting to the airline, and you're just yelling and you're very mad. And the, cust and the agent says, I know why you're angry. I understand your frustration. So this is the right thing to say, but it's not the right way to say, okay? So the agent is showing empathy, but no enthusiasm towards the customer. So this is one example. The other example, which I will go in, is the problem complaint and dissatisfaction. I'll go in because I want you to see what we are capable of in terms of building a query so you can relay this information to your customers. Now, queries can you know, consist of four different sections. The first section is phrase search. You could search for any phrase and you could actually build it in a way so that it's not only limited to one phrase per scenario, it could be multiples of different phrases that actually denote the same exact scenario. So, uh, you can separate them using the ors and the quotation marks and the parentheses, okay? And for this query, problematic calls, co problem complaint and dissatisfaction calls, we are telling, hey, the customer should say problem. But what happens if the customer says no problem? You know, that is not the right uh, way to build the query. That's why we have and not no problem. So they should be saying the problem, but they shouldn't be saying no problem. Now, the phrase search could happen in the entire call, or you can just limit it to a certain interval. Like you could say, hey, I want my search engine to find it within the first 10 seconds of each and every call or the first 20% of the call. So which is maybe if it's a five minute call, it's only the first minute, okay? So uh, you could do those kind of uh, filtering. And then the bottom line here is the conversational properties. This is actually the gist of the speech analytics engine, these are acoustic parameters. That's what we call them. And there are uh, you know, many variables here, like agent speed, the tempo, because fast or slow speech on the agent side or not matching with the customer side could be problematic. Again, the monotonicity levels. You remember the uh, empathy and no enthusiasm. <clears throat> In that example, the monotonicity level of the agent is so high, it's almost sarcastic. It's like, the agent is not showing any enthusiasm. Every hesitation they make, you know, every time they talk over, which is overlapping with the customer, we are actually measuring it. And in the problematic calls, 
there is this quarrel going on in the call and the parties don't tend to listen to each other. What they do, they start interrupting each other. So you could say, hey, there's going to be some talk over at least 10 seconds and there's going to be interruptions, five interruptions, four interruptions on agent and customer sites. Okay. So this is a great way to filter down the calls. Now, the right hand side is the metadata mostly. Okay. When did the call happen? How long it took? And then the bottom right is the emotion, which is the anger parameter. Now, the engine can differentiate angry speech from normal speech. Once you know who got angry for how long within a call, then it becomes a filter in the query that you could use. Okay. For this particular one, I'm looking for calls where the customers are not angry in the beginning, not angry in the middle, but they're angry towards the end of the conversation, okay? Meaning that the agents were not able to resolve the problem, okay? So once you build your query, the rest is really easy. Instead of using these filters one by one, you just select your query from the dropdown menu, you hit search. Now, remember from the dashboard, we had 169 calls. Look at the result here, only six calls. Six calls matching with my query. My job gets really easy, so your customers too, you know, because they could listen to six calls in no time to understand the reason why there is a problem and there is, you know, no satisfaction. And one call example here, you know, when you click on it, it's gonna be, you know, playing underneath here and it's gonna be saying, hey, uh, it's gonna be highlighting the word that each party is saying. Now. This is where the stereo recordings come into play because agent and customer are, are on different channels. And it's a great tool to understand what is being said because it's easy to follow. You can actually change the speed of the uh, player, you know, either decrease or, or increase. And also look at the right-hand side. These are the acoustic and emotional parameters, agent anger, block speech, customer anger, you know, interruptions, as I promised you, there is nine interruptions done by agents and eight interruptions by the customer, okay? So there are 17 interruptions within one call. And there is one anger towards the end of the conversation by customer because she's getting, you know, agitated over the phone. The anger parameter uh, is not using the words or the phrases. It's actually using the voice, the tonal of, of the speaker to understand that there is anger uh, within their voice, okay? So two more examples, and then I'm going to be leaving it to, to Ahmed. This is an omni-channel platform. And the reason why I show this example is because, you know, the chats are looking like this. And you can see it's actually showing two examples uh, in one, you know, call, in one uh, scenario. This customer is a non-FCR customer. Within a day, they use the chatbot of this airline and unlucky for the airline because they were not using the SESTEC chatbot, but the chatbot was not able to resolve the problem. So the next day, they called the contact center, okay? So the same customer, as you can see from the caller number, contacted the chatbot first and then the contact center later. And in the contact center conversation, they say, I'm not you know, able to resolve my problem using the, the chatbot. And one thing that you won't see in any other platform is the ability to do the transcriptions in multiple languages. What I mean is, you know, in the regions of some of the regions of the world, people are speaking more than one language, even in the same call. So the example I have here is Arabic and English example. So in the same call, the customer actually starts with English, agent greets them in Arabic, and then later, customer realizes that, hey, I, I can speak Arabic, so why don't I do it? So they convert into Arabic and occasionally they say English words within the Arabic, you know, and, and you can see from the transcription that the Arabic parts are transcribed using the Arabic alphabet and the English parts using the Latin, right? And this is one way to handle the multiple languages, even within one conversation. So uh, I, I've myself actually personally never seen uh, one of the engines doing it other than SESTEC. Okay. And then the last piece I have is the root cause analysis. I have to spend two minutes, Ahmed, and then I'm going to pass it to you. This is where you understand the root cause of a certain scenario. Why you have long calls, 
why you have calls with you know high silences you could actually create these scenarios to understand the root cause of them you can drill down and this example i have is for a magazine company who have you know people subscribing to it and people who are actually canceling their subscription now they're wondering they're scratching their heads and saying hey why do people cancel their subscription and maybe just add another touch uh, let me compare it with the people who just purchase it okay so i could run the analysis on its own saying that why people cancel it or i could do a comparison between the cancel group and the purchase group so this is what exactly i did okay i clicked on this little checkbox because that will do a comparison between the cancel group and the purchase group so it's the same call date okay it's just using two different queries one of them is looking for the word cancel within the first 45 seconds of the call. The other is not, it's the purchase group. Now the word analysis down here is showing you the differences between the cancel and the purchase group in one word, two word, and three words. Okay. Now the cancel group are saying, I can't afford phrase as the top phrase that they're saying. Okay, so this is for the cancel group. And the purchase group is just saying deliver great product, something that is not related. The filter one difference is, you know, these are the phrases that occur mostly in the cancel group, but also they're all the least occurring phrases in the purchase group. And again, the phrase I can't afford is number one. What does this tell us? It's not about the quality of my magazine. It's not about its, you know, ability to deliver, you know, the topics. So it's not about the service that I provide. It's about the price tag that I put on my service. So people are canceling because they cannot afford this. So my price point and my service is not aligned well. And how did I do this? I created two queries, probably took me five minutes each. Okay. And then I ran it through my root cause analysis module. So within a very short time, I was able to dig deeper to understand, you know, what's going on with the cancel group. And on the left-hand side on our demo environment, there are some other problem in other examples, like problematic calls versus no problematic calls, high silence calls versus low silence calls. And then, you know, average handling time, higher, lower. So you could understand the differences and you will see some results saying that, hey, okay, the longer calls are because they're dealing with a router, if it's a telco, okay? And uh, this is exactly what the customers are looking for. And with that said, I'm concluding my part, Ahmed, and it's back to you. Thank you, Anul, great, great presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank uh, so uh, let me share my screen. Share screen, yeah. Oops. Okay. So uh, when it comes to the subject of conversation analytics, most of the sales effort is directly driven by the demo itself. So if you can show a successful demo and if you can sh convince the customer that the the, the, the application is up and running in multiple similar verticals, I think you will have a big chances to keep on that impression and uh, possibly close a sales. So uh, unlike some of the other products that we have, I am spending much of my time with the demo, but I don't make it as long as, a, 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 as in a pre-sales session. So I'll try to highlight certain points. And this version of the presentation is a shortened version of the uh, pre-sales presentation and it only highlights some of the key points first of all by the way uh, the purpose in in my presentation now is not just to make you uh, uh, just to um, make it uh, like it's not to simulate the presentation itself but give you the tactics for um, how we win the deals or how we uh, influence the customer how we impress the customer so the first thing that you need to be sure about is whether they understand the core concept so because, you know, sometimes we start explaining uh, the speech analytics tool. Um, sometimes they start thinking about a speech -to text tool. Sometimes they, they, they start thinking about ASR. You know, like when it comes to speech and conversational technologies, 
it's very easy to confuse people. So uh, when we come to conversation analytics, I always make sure uh, that the customer understands the concept. And the concept is basically pooling all the data from all customer channels and uh, enabling searching and topicalizing and analysis and comparison. And voice is just one of those channels. And what, what makes voice available for this product is speech to text conversion. Because there is no other way you can search and topicalize a call without converting it to text. The conversion to text is the speech to text aspect. This is an engine which is part of an application, but that application itself is a big value. So conversation analytics is not a speech to text solution. Why I'm highlighting this? Because sometimes you will hear people releasing RFPs for a speech to text solution. Please be careful because sometimes when you dig into that, you will realize that it has nothing to do with ASR. It has nothing to do with conversation live here, but it's a speech analytics solution. So please try to clarify what the customer is expecting from the tool and please explain what conversational analytics is all about. And uh, this is one of the slides I'm using. It converts the text for the voice channel and also fetches data from all the other channels, pools them in a, in a database and the application itself allows you to search and topicalize, analyze and compare. So this is just my uh, explanation. And as you can see in that slide, it says take, take action and improve. Actually, the whole narration of my uh, standard presentations are about solidifying one clear use case together with the customers so that they understand how converting, converting a conversation to text culminates into taking action and improving your processes. So you need to fill, the, 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 fill their gaps, in their internal gaps, so that they have a clear picture of how this tool will be translated into uh, the enhancement of their operations. If you can manage this simply without complicating the issue, then it will really help. So how do I do it? First of all, I always start with explaining some of the use cases. So um, for example, some of the things that you can realize with a speech analytics tool is, for example, script adherence analysis. What is that? Your contact center agents are using their scripts, their words to convince people, to give service to people. And it's one of the key aspects of your success as a contact center, right? So I'm emphasizing these points to the customer. So how do you make sure that your agents are adhering to the scripts requested from them by their team leaders or operation managers or the quality team? So your current process is selecting a couple of calls from your uh, agents, let's say last one month of calls, and then evaluating them, them manually and drawing a conclusion on, based, based on that. And this is a very, very weak way of doing that. Why? Because statistically, selecting two calls out of 1,000 or let's say five calls out of 1,000 will never give you even a small part of the picture. But with using this tool, you will be able to analyze 100% of the calls and you will be able to pinpoint the exact cause in which your agents didn't say, let's say, um, how can we help you? Or, hi, welcome to um, blah, blah, telco. How can we help you? How can I help you? So even if I have 1,000 call and I didn't say that specific phrase 10 times, you will be able to see that. So similarly, you can do soft skills analysis soft skills basically refers to interruptions, block speech, station sounds, satisfaction and dissatisfaction analysis, complaint analysis, campaign feedback analysis. And you can also do service level analysis, right? Like for example, you can select the subset of repetitive calls and calls with, uh, with complaint patterns and very long calls. And you can dig to do like service and you can also analyze uh, uh, service and call avoidance behavior. And when I say service and call avoidance, it refers to things like routing the cu customers to branches or saying, oh, the line is bad, we cannot serve you, although it's not the case. Or saying, uh, we have a system error, please call us later, although it's not the case. As well as, for example, information deficit. It's another use case. It's one of the other favorite use cases uh, that I, I, I like explaining about. 
information deficit is a and actually i'm going to show it to you during my demo as well whenever the agent says words like i don't know i have no idea uh or whenever the agents whenever the customer says uh can you repeat i i didn't get it things like that then it has it it indicates certain type of information deficit by the way guys uh, i'm now explaining you how i explain this to my customer so my purpose here is giving them an idea about you know what type of very solid useful use cases will be available to them through the speech analytics and then i make it like i start uh, with uh, longer explanations and then i start just listing the rest because once they have oh okay i need to find an anchor so if they like the idea of script adherence analysis then they stop there and they they start feeling that yes this is a very useful tool so my purpose in this section of my presentation which is typically the first 10 minutes of my presentations is just to solidify one use case in the minds of the customer so that they relate with the relate with the tool itself and then i typically stop with information deficit why during my very quick demo i'm showing them a solid example of how i measure the information deficit okay okay you can also select one of one of the other use cases and then i list all of these and then i stop there and i say okay now i, I want to stop here and i want to go directly to my demo so that you can see things in action do you have any question up until this now when i say this with a high possibility some of the customers will ask you the language question the big language question the, I, by the way i'm talking about the sales the first sales contact now i'm not talking about typically the next meeting will be pre-sales meeting where anil will go into the details as he did now but in, in the first meeting you have to address some of the very deep concerns one is this useful or how is this useful second does it work with my language this is the big question my tactic for that is i don't explain much i just you know i stop here deliberately and then whenever i'm 90 percent chances that someone will ask that question and whenever they ask it i say yes and i just switch to this slide what is the slide if i'm as as my region is apac mia so uh, and most of my customers are from the mia region I switch on to my references from the MIA region. And I say, uh, first of all, the language, the question uh, with Arabic is a very relevant question. Um, I always emphasize that SESTEC is standing out in its competition ecosystem with its success with localization. And rather than uh, using words, I can just tell you that we have done the first banking, successful bank implementation in this country. And we have done the first telco in that country and the second and the third and this and that. So I'm, I'm somehow giving the uh, confidence to the customer saying that, look, we have already processed that language. So if you have a, if you're in a similar situation, you should use the same tactic. And actually, uh, if we have an audience, even in, in the first meeting, which, which is uh, more technical, I'm telling them, look, we have a localization procedure and we localize the, uh, we localize the language on the level of the customer. We collect samples. And we already have a very strong background uh, modeling as well. So for the case of Arabic or Russian or French or whatever, it's always good to say that we have already processed that language. We have a big background model. But if this is a customer that you're having this interaction and we, have, we haven't done any similar type of project in the past with that language, then you should, you should use a different language. Then I typically give the example of our first project for Flemish, our first project for French. And I'm always highlighting one point our positioning in the market as a product is different we are doing tailoring so even if you are the first customer with which we will work with for that language we are still collecting data and we are generating an ideal model for you using your own data not for example if this is a customer from somali or if it's a customer from france if this is a customer from malaysia whatever we are saying we are not we are not going to develop a language model for malay language we are going to develop a language model for you as a customer if you're a telco it will be a telco model for you specifically so after this point um i think someone is asking a question let me check my, my questions just to make sure actually it was me ahmed because yes, i need please. to leave for another uh, sure. presentation so thank you so much thank you anil i'll, I, I'll just wrap up also okay thank you bye-bye yeah. bye-bye so let me go back uh, to, to my presentation. So here, another trick I use, I just jump to the presentation. So I'm not going to repeat the tr presentation, but uh, I typically highlight a couple of things. First of all, this is my opening module. This is the dashboard. 
I don't spend time with the dashboard. I just want them to see things flying and running and turning. You know, this like this this will have an impression on them, right? And I'm just explaining with a couple of sentences, saying, "Look, this is the uh, most. These are the most frequently used keywords, especially if I'm speaking with an Arabic audience. I'm saying these are the most frequently used keywords for Arabic, and this is like a drill down dashboard. And then I say, let me go straight forward to the core module. When I say go, let me go straight forward to the core module. I always, you know, make them listen to some of the calls." and see how the system transcribes very accurately the Arabic speech. And, and then I show some of the immersion, you know, there is some burst here. I don't, I'm not sure whether you're hearing that right now, but some of the burst, some of the silence, some of the anger, things like that. And then as Anna showed you already, I'm also trying to show them our muscles in customization. And I'm showing them, especially this example, saying, look, we can even analyze calls in which there's a mixture of languages. So this is the level of our customization. So after this point, then I start referring to the use case itself, information deficit. So uh, it's always important because if you can visualize even only one use case, then it will be very useful. So I typically make ready all my, as you can see, this is not a detailed presentation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven slides, uh, tabs already open. And for each tab, I spend one or two minutes. And very quickly, I can just cover all the subjects, okay? So please make sure that you have the most relevant ones. And these are my typical relevant modules. Uh, first of all, the search call module. And I always open one of the you know, transcriptions in front of the customer. And I always try to select one call, which includes a lot of emotional parameters. Because I want them to appreciate the fact that they will be able to analyze calls, uh, calls content, as well as its emotional uh, structure, right? So uh, after this step, again, I start explaining them a bit about how this a module in front of them translates into an actionable, real um, enhancement in their contact center. And for that, again, uh, if I have selected information deficit, then that's another story. If I selected uh, customer dissatisfaction, that's another story. But what I'm explaining them in this stage is, look, when you select information deficit, and then when you make an agent view, then you will be able to see which specific agent has said I don't know, I have no clue types of expressions more than the rest of the population. So it's always important. They should understand that with this tool, you can see different distributions. For example, you can see what are the worst scorers and what are the top scorers. And when you highlight the worst scorers and they say, oh, okay, these five guys kept on saying, like in Arabic, they say madri in English, uh, no clue in other, another language, another expression. So depending on your audience, when you make them appreciate, oh, oh my God, this tool will tell me how many times each of the agents said this keyword, and it also makes a descending order so I can see the worst scorers. And what next? Now you know the worst scorers. The next step is understanding why they said mad, or I don't know. The why comes from topic distribution. Then I explain them how you, for example, highlight those five people and you see the topic distribution, which means now you're able to listen to uh, understand why exactly those people said, I don't know, okay? And then I, I just keep, keep on telling them, now you can go to the level of specific calls themselves. Now you can listen to the context of whenever they said, I don't know, or if uh, in Arabic, things like that. And then I play a couple of uh, calls like this. So this is the verification module. So I'm not repeating this. So there will be, a, I, I mean, based on Anul's presentation, I'm sure you have an idea now. So. I make them appreciate how fast they can start with no information about who knows what, going into a listing of uh, based on agents, and then going down to the very call itself. And you know, when you open that module, you can listen to the context of whenever the people say, I don't know. I don't know, blah, blah. I don't know, blah, blah. And you can all the pretext as well, the context. So you can see uh, before and after the expression itself very quickly. It means within less than 10 seconds, you can, can you imagine, even if you have an operation of 10,000 people, within less than 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you will have each um, uh, team lead will have a clear idea about how many people said, I don't know, why they said so, and what exactly they said, because they are listening to five seconds each call, even if you listen 100, 100 calls, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, 1,000 seconds, right? It's, 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 it's less, less than 20 minutes. So um, this is a tactic. So I, I, I really suggest you to do that because in this point, you know, the quality people and operation people started getting very, very excited. 
Trust me, I did I, because it's unimaginable coming from a contact center background myself as well. It's unimaginable going from the operation level, going down to agent level, and understanding who said I don't know and in which context. This is such a powerful use case. So all of these pitch takes almost 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes maximum. And then I quickly show, show them snapshots of some of the nice functions like automated quality evaluation. I spent just two minutes. And then I show them some, some fancy, um, fancy uh, pro, uh, reports like that. And then I stop. So this is the moment where you have their arms fully open and they think about, oh, this is really, really so nice, you know. Um, uh, I, I, I wish it's not too expensive type of thought. I, I, when, this, when you come to that point, and if you can explain this right, imagine they have a clear idea about at least one strong use case, and they have seen it, they have smelled it. Uh, you can do things together with the customers. And uh, after this point, wh what I do is I go back to my one slide and I stop, okay, I want to uh, uh, get your questions, please. Any further questions? Sometimes you will hear a long silence. Sometimes they will ask you questions about licensing. Sometimes they will ask you questions about how to integrate with their call recording system. Then you can, I mean, if you have that knowledge, you can just respond or you can say, we can have another call with the pre-sales. Uh, you can ask for, they can ask for references. They can ask for reference calls. These are all possible, but most probably you have a customer now which is ready to work with you or willing to work with that solution. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to explain my experience with selling this solution. And uh, I, I, I highlighted that most of my, conversational uh, analytics related sales is focused on the demo, but this demo is not a detailed one. I don't go into details. Uh, I, I have two stops. One stop after this, this point, after explaining the use cases, I make a stop and I get the initial questions. Most probably they're gonna ask questions about language. It's important to explain them, explaining that there's a language model, acoustic model, we collect data, we do uh, customer specific calibration for that. And this is what we do. And we have done it in multiple places. We are quite uh, well acknowledged if with our success with customization. This is my first trick. And then I go straight forward to our demo. I just make sure that they, they are at least clear with one single use case. And I open all the slides relevant to that use case. Like I do a sorting, I open all the calls relevant. Sometimes if I have more time, for example, in this case, you can, exp you can do all this pitch in 20, uh, 30 minutes. But if you have one hour, of course, I spend more time with the demo. But uh, I don't spend much time with the words. I don't spend much time with the slides because this solution is very rich as an application, very rich. So that richness all, already speaks for itself. And I, I would rather suggest everyone to speak uh, more on the demo rather than uh, give them like a lot of slides. And then it's always good for you to know how to pitch, at least how to show some of the key modules. And there are also key differentiators within those modules, by the way. Finally, if the conversation comes to competition, uh, there are standard things that, that, are, that I always highlight. First of all, localization. Second, our flexibility to integrate with third-party solutions. Third, uh, the strength of the solution itself, the modules which are not existing with other customers. And fourth, this is also a key point, we are very closely engaged with our customers and we have consultancy packages and we always make sure that the customer actually uses that. Imagine someone is talking about big data and they have Hadoop or some, some newer technology, but they don't know what type of in information to extract. That's very important. And the fact that, uh, for example, if especially you're speaking with an audience from uh, one of the regions that we have extensively worked with, then you should always use this trick. You should say, look, we have done similar projects for Arabic, for uh, Russian, for this and that. And we have a lot of use cases with telcos, a lot of use cases with banks. All of these use cases as a know-how will be transferred to you uh, through, during the uh, standard consultancy package, which is part of the project or the two days training. And we will feed you with that data. And in the, even in the end of the project, you will have very clear use cases and you will have very easy to use dashboard uh, you know, uh, reports that will give you so much data. And then if I have time, I explain them how once they have a solid procedure, once they have a, they have a solid process and uh, reports and, you know, in terms of the queries themselves and the reports to be looked at, it will be very easy to them. And using our scheduled report with one shot, with one shot, they will understand and digest so much information that uh, it will be very comfortable for them. And we will always be with them to make sure that they have relevant skill, skill groups, uh, resources, 
and we will help them train those skill skill sets and uh, we will also make sure uh, we have all the core functionality up and running the moment we uh, sign off the UAT and go live with the store. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, more than happy to respond. Let me open my screen so that I see your questions, if there are any. But I'm done with my part. I hope you, you uh, enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions now or then, please do ask me.